Thank you, Senator Wong. Senator Ludlam. Um, thank you very much, Mr. President. I rise to support Senator Milne and this Greens motion to have this matter debated urgently. And I'll just indicate to Senator Wong um, the motion was distributed to, Sen to senators in the chamber. I've got a copy of it here. So, um, our preference, however, is to have this uh, motion debated and voted on before we throw the ADF into harm's way, because doing it afterwards um, is kind of beside the point. This deployment will still not be put to a vote. I just want to um, point out to those who may be listening from outside the building that this debate today seeks to establish chamber time for a vote on the matter, rather than simply pretending that the Prime Minister's office can, uh, will take care of the matter and that they've got it all under control. I want to highlight the fact that the arguments that were raised when we brought this matter to the chamber um, a week or two ago was that it's impossible, indeed insane, for the parliament to conduct such a debate because we would be intruding into tactical decisions, we'd be giving our intentions away to the enemy, uh, we wouldn't be able to move swiftly enough. All of these arguments that for some reason uh, assume that Australian parliamentarians are incapable of holding an intelligent, reasoned debate on such a serious issue have been blown out of the water by actions in kindred parliaments around the world. The fact that Prime Minister Cameron recalled Westminster last week for precisely that debate. Uh, the motion was carried, as it probably would be in Australia, because Labor is at one with the Abbott government on this matter. But at least senators and members would be forced to put their names on the record on one side or another and take responsibility for the decision that is being made in our name. If it's good enough for Westminster, what British parliamentarians and thereby the media and the public have been able to establish is that the vote is uh, constrained to, um, to airstrikes and air operations, that it does not uh, contemplate ground troops and it does not contemplate incursions into Syria. Uh, and so the British people at least have some idea of, of the scope and nature of the deployment and it is conferred. Uh, it may not have strategic legitimacy but at least has a veneer of democratic legitimacy in that parliament has been brought into the loop and MPs have been forced to stand up and be counted one way or another. And I should point out a substantial minority of those uh, in the British parliament, in the House at least, voted against the deployment uh, for many of the same reasons that Senator Milne has identified this morning. So what is it that they can manage to do this in Westminster, where their bruising experience of the Iraq war, where British soldiers were coming home uh, wrapped in flags uh, with horrific regularity? What is it that they learned about the Iraq deployment that we have failed to learn here in Australia? How extensive will this deployment be? These no, group, no boots on the ground commitment has been jettisoned. The strictly humanitarian mission concept has already been jettisoned. Now they're also the Australian government is, is being deliberately ambiguous about our engagement or not inside Syria, which is where the largest um, footprint of the Islamic State support base is. And what is the risk that Australia is inadvertently playing directly into the hands of this um, horrific entity and simply playing our part in their recruitment strategy? Has that been considered by the National Security Council um, of the government? How long will they be deployed for? What does success look like? These are matters that can be brought to the Australian Parliament so that those on the front bench and the back bench, in the opposition parties and on the cross bench, can put their name on one side of the ledger or not. But we know what happens when this is simply left as a decision to the Prime Minister alone because that's how this whole horrific mess started. Simply calling it a tradition, as Senator Fifield did before, is not good enough. There are all kinds of things that used to be a tradition. That uh, I think tradition was the word you used, Senator Fifield. Uh, convention will do just as well. Conventions change. It's time that we grew up, as other parliaments around the world have done. President Obama, while contesting the notion that he needs to go to Congress for authorization for airstrikes in Iran, nonetheless sought congressional authority uh, to go into Syria. To go into Syria. It's a democracy. It's a democracy. Order on my right. And what more important a question to bring to a chamber such as this? than the decision to employ the ADF into harm's way. If it's good enough for President Obama to seek congressional authority for attacks inside Syria, if it's good enough for Prime Minister Cameron to go to his parliament to seek parliamentary approval for airstrikes in Iraq, then it's about time we grew up so that we don't find ourselves subject to mission creep in a horrendous multi-year long uh, occupation of a country uh, that 
Foreign flagged high explosives have been a really important part in, dis in destabilising that part of the world in the first place. It's time we learn from the mistakes of the past.